Adventures, it's Rachel and welcome back to Looking for Adventure Art and today we have a really fun Calligraphy 101 video for you. I'm going to go over several different versions of calligraphy, different styles, different types of pens, things of that nature. It should be really fun so if you're just getting started or if you want to get started into calligraphy, this is going to be a very helpful video for you. If you happen to be new here, think about hitting that subscribe button down below and I'm not going to waste too much time into it so let's Let's just jump in and let's get started. So to get started, I have an assortment of different types of calligraphy pens on my table and they each have their own special purpose and style so this will hopefully help you choose what kind of style and what direction you want to go in. I kind of want to really learn and dive into everything so that is why I have everything is because I'm working very hard to practice and get better at all of these styles. I am by no means an expert at any of them but I have been working really hard and I am continuing to learn and get better every single day so I hope that the little bit of knowledge that I have gained recently in practicing will help you as well. The first style of calligraphy that I want to talk to you about is pointed pen calligraphy and this happens to have two different types of nib holders. There is this oblique nib holder because it is off to the side and then a straight nib holder which obviously you can see is straight. Another variation of the straight nib holder is a lot of times the really fun feathered pens and I think that these are really cute, a ton of fun, I love having mine and the nib does come out of this one as well. The little piece here on the side of the oblique nib holder is called a flange and this is where you are going to put in your nib. There are many different styles of nibs and they all write differently. Some are better for beginners than others. A lot of this uh, tends to be used for Spencerian and copper plate type style handwriting and I have one really good starter nib here. I had heard that this is a really good starter nib from what I have been practicing with which is not too too much because I've been working on just going back to the basics of my handwriting. This is a Nico G nib, also a Zebra G nib. Those are the best sort of starter nibs and I wanted to just show you what to do to get started and how to put that in your pen. So this is my oblique holder and this is my nib and one thing that you do want to keep in mind is there is a cut right down the center and these are known as tines and you will also see me refer to the tines on fountain pens as well. They also have that slit in the middle that makes two tines and this is how the ink flows through and you do not want to misalign these tines at all. You don't want to handle them so you want to hold it farther back on the nib. Some people use pliers. I don't happen to have any at the moment. And right here at the top of the flange, you see that there is this curved area. Now there are certain flanges on some of the nicer oblique nib holders that are adjustable. They have a hinge here. They open and close because not every nib is sort of curved or built exactly the same. So this one does happen to fit this hinge though. So I don't need to do any adjusting. I needed to just push this out just a little bit and then all you're going to do is in between these two pieces right here you're just going to go in and you're going to very carefully just start to push that in. It does really help if you have some pliers. I do not but never grab it from the tines. You really don't want to do that. You want to hold it a bit farther back and there you go. And then you're going to start to slide that in should start to go and some of the nibs are longer than others. I have a few nibs that are a little bit shorter. This is a longer nib so it's going to hang out of the back and now I've heard several different things but I seem to see across the board that a good guideline or where you're supposed to put the nib is sort of parallel. The point should be going straight down the center of your oblique nib holder. So this should be a line straight down and the nib should match that. Now not everybody seems to do that uh, but that is what I have heard is best, that is what I have been doing and it seems to be working very well. But that is how you put in a nib into an oblique holder. Now when you first get your nibs they are going to have a coating on them so you are going to need to take the coating off because if you don't all it's going to do is pull up the ink and just not have it flow properly on your nib. 
So there's several things that people do. I have just a little dap and dish here of rubbing alcohol. Some people use Windex. Others do a little more old school flame and just pass it, um, old school way, and just pass it through a flame a few times and then clean it off. But for you, I am just going to take my nib, dip it in the rubbing alcohol, and then dry it off on my paper towel. Again, you don't want to press too hard on those tines because you don't want to spring them or misalign them. Now that my nib is prepped and ready to go, you can start writing. One of the best ways to hold an oblique nib holder is what they call a tripod grip. You want to have a secure grip, but you don't want to death grip your pen. If you're seeing any white knuckles at all, if your hand is trying to cramp up or hurt, you are not holding the pen the right way. So you want a nice tripod grip that's one finger on each side and one down below, and these two fingers are free. This is the proper way to hold uh, basically your fountain pen or a oblique or standard nib holder. Another thing to keep in mind, which is something that I am still working on, I am still trying to break my death grip, but you want to not write with your fingers. You want to move with your wrist and your arm. This will help any fatigue, it won't wear your fingers out so much, and it will make beautiful and better flourishes. I'm gonna do a quick writing sample for you now. I am not very good. I have not been practicing that much with this. Again, I'm still working on getting my basic handwriting really, really solid again, and then I will move on to Spencerian. But I'm just going to dip this into my Daffin dish. This is just some ink that I have. And I'm going to just Take off the excess off the bat, and you can see that with no pressure, you have just some very light marks. These are called hairlines, and that is ideally what you want during an upstroke. Now if I start adding a little bit more pressure, you start to see thicker strokes, and that is what you're going to want on the downstroke. So on the upstroke, you're going to pull up. And then the downstroke, you're going to press a little bit harder. Now you can see that here, my ink stopped with the flow. This is because I need to re-dip my pen, but that is called railroading because when the tines spread apart, you are now getting two railroad tracks instead of a nice fluid amount of ink. So I'm just going to re-dip my pen, and then I'm going to show this to you again. So the upstroke is going to be nice and thin, and on the downstroke, it's going to be nice and thick. Come back up, down, up, down, and see about there. I need to re-dip my pen. Now there's a lot of different uh, drills that you can do to start getting better, but I'm not going to show those in this video. I will do a separate video for that, so let me know if that's something that you are interested in wanting to see. But this is just kind of the general overview of the oblique and standard nib holders. The last thing that I want to talk about uh, with these holders is to clean off the nib. You can just rinse it in water um, and then wipe it off gently, but you don't want to let the ink sit and dry on these nibs. You do want to clean them off right away. The next type of pen that I want to show you is something that I think a lot of people can really appreciate and have fun with, especially if you just really love the shading and all the different colors of ink and you don't want to get so technical or specific or you don't want to have to carry a fountain pen around to uh, be able to use those amazing colors of ink. And this is a glass dip pen. This one is from J. Bond and I picked it up at uh, goulaypens.com and I love it. This is a lot of fun, and I find that these are great for really kind of going old school. This is one of the older methods of ink, and up in the nib up here, there are these sort of lines, and that is what holds the ink. So when you start to write with it, you're going to want to turn the pen. It's going to feel a little weird at first, but I know that you're going to pick it up really, really fast, because after every few words, you start to just naturally turn the pen. It's really cool and it is a lot of fun and it can look really pretty and it can also be really simple for the handwriting that you have right now. Now I'm just going to do a quick writing sample for you kind of showing how the uh, ink varies with this pen because it is going to start out much thicker and darker and then lighten up as you lose ink on the pen. So you can tell by some really really old documents in history that they were written with a glass dip pen because the line variation and the line color is uneven. I'm just going to be using my 
Noodler's Black Swan and Australian Roses. And I am just dipping it almost to the top of the nib. And then I'm tapping off the excess and then you can start to write. It will feel a little weird at first, but that is totally fine. And you can see that it does hold quite a bit of ink and you get some really nice variation. Just in case you were curious, Australian Roses does happen to be one of my all-time favorite colors for fountain pen ink. I absolutely love it and I think it is a gorgeous color. To clean off your glass dip pen, all you need to do is take a damp paper towel and just twist it and pull it through and it cleans all of that ink off. This is one of the easiest things to clean in the world and it's one of the most fun things to get to use. The next type of calligraphy pen that I wanna talk about is fountain pens and this is one of my all-time favorite things. I have been becoming obsessed with them. I love them. They are amazing so I have several different ones out here in several different sizes to show you. I'm not going to talk too, too much about fountain pens because I am going to be doing a separate fountain pen 101 video and fountain pen series within this calligraphy series. So I just want to kind of give you the basics. Fountain pens are very much a personal preference. There is a lot of variation between them from weight and the length of them and if they're postable and the color and the size and the nib and then of course what types of ink you want. So I'm going to mainly talk to you about the nib today because we are showing different variations of calligraphy and I'm going to go through the nibs that I have right now. This is an extra fine nib on my Keras Customs but it is a German nib, I believe. Uh, the pen is made in the US, but German and Japanese nibs are very different. The Japanese grind their nibs much finer, so a medium nib in a Japanese is going to be skinnier than a medium in a German nib. So it, that's something to keep in mind just across brands and what they use. But this is an extra fine, and then this is a medium. You're gonna see kind of how the two maybe don't vary quite as much as you would think. Then I have a broad nib here. I have a 1.5 millimeter, which is used for calligraphy, and I'm not very good at using my 1.5 millimeter. I just got it a week ago. And then I have a flex nib, which you will see is very similar to the oblique nib holder, but the oblique nib holder does amazing, gorgeous stuff if you practice a lot. Now my pens are running out of ink and I am actually going to be filming how to uh, refill and clean your pens. So hopefully I have enough ink in these to show you writing samples. But this is going to be the extra fine nib. And I'm just going to write this quickly. So my handwriting may not be the best right now. Then I have what is a medium nib, but it is a Japanese medium. And I am running out of ink. And you can see there's not too much different. The next that I have is a broad nib, and I think this one is out of ink. Let's see if we can get this going. The broad nib is currently my favorite size, though I do really like the extra fine as well. Then I have the 1.5 millimeter stub, which I just changed, so let me...
And the nice thing about this stub is that you get fat strokes going down and then very skinny strokes going across. So people do some really amazing stuff with this all the time. I absolutely love it. I can't wait to get better. Some of the Gothica writing I know uses stub nibs. They even have bigger ones than that. And then they also have a parallel, which goes really big, but I have not picked any of those up yet. And then the last nib is the flex nib. And this is also like the oblique nib holder where you're getting lots of skinny strokes and then if you apply a bit of pressure you get some thicker strokes so you can go up and down and up down I have a little bit of railroading but that is okay and it makes some beautiful line variation for everyday writing the last type of calligraphy pen that I want to talk to you about is brush calligraphy. And I have here some Tombow dual brush pens. These are really amazing and really great. I currently have the bright colors set just to try them out because originally I didn't think it was my thing, but I'm very, very quickly becoming a fan. I've only gotten to play with these the last few days. I picked them up specifically for this video, but I have been having so much fun with them. So I can't wait to practice and get better. But with brush calligraphy, you can also use some really cool things like watercolors and using a watercolor brush pen, all kinds of fun stuff. But these in particular, I really like and enjoy because they have such a wonderful brush tip. They also do have a fine nib on the bottom, so if you want to go in and sharpen up any detail or add details and mix colors, you can. They are totally blendable, so I am a little obsessed and I might end up at some point getting the full set. Now, I am not an expert by any means, and again, I've only been playing with these for a few days. I had done some practice here on another one, trying to blend some orange and blue together, which was kind of cool, uh, and just have some fun with it, see what they could do. So I'm just going to kind of show you a few of the cool things that these brush pens can do. I don't have an amazing hand yet at them. One thing to keep in mind is you do want to hold them a little bit farther back, and now if you go on a downstroke here, you can see how nice and thick they are. But if you go up on an upstroke and you hold it up just a little bit, you can get some nice thin strokes as well. So this is really nice for doing many, many fun things. I still don't have a very steady hand. It is a new way of holding a pen for me that is very difficult. But I will do my best for you today just to be able to kind of show you how they can blend. So I have written my first word and I'm just going to come in with my darkest one and I'm just going to write some words. I'm not trying to make any of this pretty. I learned this little trick watching the Tombow YouTube channel so this is not my own design but I figured it was a good simple design to kind of get you an idea of how these pens work. So you can see that it has a lot of line variation and then you can come in and you can start to shade some of your letters which I think is really fun. I don't know. Let's do... I'm not trying to do anything in particular right now.
So now that I have my darkest color there, think of it almost like Copics. You have your light, your medium, and your dark, but that doesn't always have to be the case. They don't always have to blend. I'm gonna come in with my light purple. I'm gonna start by overlapping, and I'm gonna pull that down a little bit. Now to further blend these two together, there are several different techniques that I have learned and I guess it depends kind of on how you're feeling and what you find works best for you along with what colors you are using. But I have seen some people take then the original color and go back over everything working to shade it all together. And I have also seen people come in with the blender pen and then take it and start to blend it all together and pull that color out a bit. You just need to figure out what works best for you and your markers and your style. And there you go, some nice and awesome shaded letters. If you want, you can go onto a nonstick craft sheet and you can scribble off some color and then you can take another color and scribble that and make a custom color that then you can write with. And have it blend out. Make sure that if you want one solid color all the way around that you scribble that together to have a more even blend. The color will eventually come out of the pen so you don't have to worry. Another thing that you can do is you can take two of the nibs and you can touch them together. So you can see the original color comes out and as I continue to write, the actual color of the pen comes back. And I think that that is very, very cool. So those are some really cool tips and tricks for starting calligraphy. I hope that you found this video really helpful on trying to figure out what sort of tools might inspire you and the direction that you want to go for calligraphy. But before we go, I do have one last question for you, and that is our question of the day. My question of the day for all of you is, 
Out of all of these different styles, which is your favorite? I would love to know what you have to say, so let me know in the comments down below. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for all the daily updates. And if you happen to be following along with me in my calligraphy series, or if you happen to make anything on my channel, feel free to email me or tag me on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or I don't know, whatever kind of social media it is that you guys do, because I want to see it. And don't forget, every day is a new adventure, so come back next time for a new adventure with us.